Hey, Dr. Ben Lynch here. Four types of B12. You confused? Yes, I know. Let's clarify that confusion right now, shall we? Let's start with the easy one. Cyanocobalamin, garbage can. That simple. Cyanocobalamin is a synthetic form of B12 that you don't want to be using in your patients. It's cheap and it's, it's utilized, but it's a demanding process to convert cyano into methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. So why take a nutrient that your patient has to transform using other nutrients in order to make it bioavailable and effective? Let's not do that, right? Cyanocobalamin, garbage can, stop using it. Now, methylcobalamin, the kingpin. A lot of people are deficient in methylcobalamin, why? Antacids, a lot of people are taking antacids. A lot of people are also vegetarians or vegans and they're not eating their red meat. Methylcobalamin requires very good absorption and digestive system function, right? So patients who have poor digestion or they're taking antacids or both and not eating red meat or even eating red meat could be deficient in B12. So you check serum cobalamin, it looks fine. That doesn't tell you anything. Serum cobalamin is not a good marker. Look at MCV, MCH. MCV and MCH is elevated or borderline high, then you know that they're B12 or fully deficient or both. Okay, methylcobalamin is very important. It's ready, it's ready to work. Methylcobalamin supports methylation, but it needs methylfolate in order to work, okay? So methylfolate and methylcobalamin are in tandem to support methylation. That's where I'll stop on methylcobalamin. Now, methylcobalamin needs also to be carried, and it needs to be carried by transcobalamin. There are genetic issues that take your transcobalamin and help carry your methylcobalamin. Glutathione is needed to help that binding be stronger. So if your patient is glutathione deficient and you're giving methylcobalamin and they're still not getting a good effect, maybe they're deficient in glutathione. So support their glutathione levels. Now, adenosylcobalamin, what's that? Adenosylcobalamin is the fuel B12. It's the kickstarter. So if you give adenosylcobalamin to a patient who's tired and fatigued or who has exercise-induced fatigue that's too quick, it just doesn't seem right to you that they, they run a quarter of a mile and they're just hurting, maybe they have a genetic defect or some enzymatic cofactor problem that converts methylcobalamin to adenosylcobalamin. That conversion occurs in the mitochondria because adenosylcobalamin is the mitochondrial form of B12. So, Check for it, and you can check to see if their adenosylcobalamin levels are okay. How? You check urinary methylmalonic acid, which you know about. Oh, that's what that's checking. Yes, if you're low in adenosylcobalamin, the patient's methylmalonic acid levels will be high or pushing high. Hydroxocobalamin is the third one. It's the third active form. And hydroxocobalamin is very useful to lower nitric oxide levels. Now, I know you cardiologists out there think, whoa, 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 nitric oxide is really useful. It is, in the right amounts. Too much causes radical issues in your patient, reactive oxygen species. So, we wanna make sure that the nitric oxide levels are where they need to be. And you also need to also support them with glutathione and superoxide dismutase as well. So, if you, if you give hydroxycobalamin to lower the nitric oxide and your patient does better, that's a sign that their nitric oxide levels are elevated. And you typically see elevated nitric oxide in patients with chronic disease, especially uh, autoimmune disease or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue. These things can, are known to drop nitric oxide levels and improve. The research is out there. So those are the three, four types that you wanna be focusing on. Again, cyano garbage can, Methylcobalamin supports methylation, adenosylcobalamin supports energy, and hydroxyscobalamin supports the reduction of nitric oxide and optimizes the levels. Thank you, hope that's useful for you. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about this. ShyCon 2015, have you heard about it? You just enjoyed this video, I hope. You're excited about it. This information is very clinically relevant to you and your patients. ShyCon 2015 is an upcoming conference in October that you can't miss. There's 400 
like-minded people like me, like yourself, that want to know more about how to optimize the health of your patients. You have four days of it. You have 400 doctors who are wanting to get more information on this and do what they need to do and transform medicine and transform the health of your patient and transform your practice. ShyCon 2015, you can do it. Learn more at seekinghealth.org. Thank you.